So today we're gonna be talking about one by one. Like so, we're gonna be start talking about LinkedIn. LinkedIn right now has more or less 200 million members. Even if we consider 10% of these 200 million like fake or double profiles or duplicate profiles, we still have at least 175 million people active on LinkedIn. 50% or 50 to 55% of the members on LinkedIn are in the United States. The second country I believe is the UK and then comes India. And why we care? Because most of the decision makers of the 500 fortune companies and of any companies are on LinkedIn. I mean, it's more and more used these days. I have been using LinkedIn since 2007 and it has been a great tool. And uh, the members on LinkedIn are increasing because people are thinking, okay, that's the only really professionally network that is there on the social media channels. And it's not really a social media network because social media, remember, is about two-way dialogue. LinkedIn is not really a two-way dialogue. It's basically you put posts and people respond to you, but it does not have the power of real-time like Twitter discussion or Facebook IM. So we call it a social media channel rather than a network. So um, uh, it went IPO in 2011. And whoever has been using LinkedIn will have noticed three weeks ago that they changed the whole format of LinkedIn. They changed how the, the page looks. They, they really hit some of the features that you actually have to go and look for them now. And they added new features. The, the newest features that they added are two things, are skill endorsement, and you can add actually an image for your company page as a banner. You know how Facebook has the big <coughs> picture on top? Now you can do that on LinkedIn. It still gives you a little bit of trouble because you have to really watch their, their, um, uh, their dimension, and their dimension on LinkedIn is 646 by 220, and it has to be uh, a PNG, a PNG, or a JPEG uh, format. But we're gonna go through that anyhow. What's IPO? You said it went IPO in 2011. IPO is like when it goes on the stock market. Okay. And they start selling shares okay. for it. Remember how Facebook went, but it sure. really went really bad. But LinkedIn is not like that. It really maintained, it really maintained its value. Uh, LinkedIn is basically the only professional network that exists right now on the social media uh, uh, market. The average income of a member on LinkedIn is 109000 a year. Fortune 500 companies are there, decision makers are there. For you to understand how LinkedIn works, just know that LinkedIn works based on three degrees of separation. What does that mean? It means that your connections will be either primary, secondary, or third. What does that mean? The primary means that are your direct connections. And when you have someone in your first degree contacts, you can actually see their email address. You get their email address automatically. So you can co communicate with them even without LinkedIn. The secondary connections are the connections of your connections. The third are the connections of the connections of your connections. When you say that someone is in my net, and there are some expressions that we need to know what they mean on LinkedIn. So if we say someone is in my network, that means they are either a first, second, or third degree, or they share a group with me. Or they share a group with me. Sharing a group with someone else enables you to send them a direct message without being connected to them. So people say, oh, and so LinkedIn tells you if you really want to connect to someone that you have a job or you have a business that you really want to connect to, and you know they are the decision maker, send them on a free account, send them an email. In-mail costs you $10. Each in-mail on a free account costs you $10. A what? In in-mail, I-N-M-A-I-L. So instead of doing that, look at that person, which groups they belong to. Join that group. So you can actually message them and then leave the group if you, don't, if you don't feel like being there. Groups on LinkedIn are great. There are, like we discussed, there are millions of groups uh, on, on LinkedIn. You are allowed 
to be a member of 50 groups at any one time. Also, you are allowed to be a member of 30 subgroups because the groups on LinkedIn have groups and some of them have subgroups. So you can join up to 30 subgroups and 50 groups. And let me tell you, it's more than enough because, and, and the more groups you, the most important thing on LinkedIn is that you optimize your profile. And what does that mean? LinkedIn is very Google friendly. So whatever you have on your profile or whenever you Google your name, the first thing that comes up on, your Google, on the Google page, number one is your LinkedIn profile. And because we have 175 to 200 million members on LinkedIn, you can never know who might be looking for your services or your products. But if you, the bigger network you have, the higher you're going to look in searches. You're going to appear in searches. Because if someone is searching for your services, if someone is looking, for example, for a chiropractor in Los Angeles, and Rick's profile is not optimized to say that, so he does not going to appear in page one on LinkedIn search. That means for whoever is searching, he doesn't exist. And there are ways, you need to think again about the keywords that we talked about the last time. And the keywords is what you want people to find you under. And there are actual places where you can put this keyword so people can find you. And the most important one is your tagline. And your tagline is like whatever appears. Do we, who has a LinkedIn profile? Yeah. What's your first name? Yeah, I Lens. You do, Rick? Yeah. George, you do? Yeah. No. Um, no. no. So coming back to optimizing your profile, your tagline is whatever appears right under your name. You know, when someone moves like a cursor on, on, the, on your picture, your name and your tagline comes in. And what most of people I have seen doing is when they put the current title or the current profession, they don't realize that there is a little check mark that if they leave, their tagline would be their current position. So it doesn't help them. So you actually have to make sure to uncheck that little thing so it won't show as your tagline. Your tagline, consider it your business card. What is it that you want people to know about you? That's where you put your value proposition. That's where you put what you really do best. That's where you put your USP, which is unique selling proposition. People that don't use that are losing a huge resource for connecting with people. Are you going to show, show that? Yeah, I'm going to show you on, on. I'm just going through the basics and then I'm going to take you online. LinkedIn, the maximum use of LinkedIn is you have to actually fill your profile 100%. Hmm. And filling the profile 100% includes some items. The first item is you have to have a picture there. You have to have a photo of yourself there. And make sure that the photo that you have it's not you and your wife, or you and your dog, or you and your child. It's about a professional picture that shows your face. So the MRI of the skull and neck. Uh, no, nope. no logos. No. <laughs> no, no. You know what? You know that if someone flags your profile, LinkedIn will actually suspend your account. What would they flag it for? Bec for an inappropriate picture. An MRI of the brain. Because LinkedIn has terms of service where, first of all, you cannot have your business name as your profile name. It's against, it's against LinkedIn uh, terms of services. So you have to have a personal profile with your first name and last name. You have to have a proper picture. You cannot have your name or your web, I'm sorry, your email or your website next to your name or in your tagline. Again, it's against LinkedIn. If not, they will suspend your account. And you can't have more than one profile. Hmm? So it's really just all about you. It's okay. just all about a personal profile. And then on your profile, if you have a business that has a website and where you actually have an email of that domain name of that website, you can have a company page. And the company page on LinkedIn is add, they added a lot of features, so you can actually have products, you can have features, people can follow your company, you can have a, ban a banner image of your company right now even on your company page. So that's why LinkedIn is becoming like really 
the best, it has always been the only and the best professional network. So in order for you to fill 100% of your profiles, you have to have a picture, you have to have at least five skills, you have to have a present title, position, and a past position, and your summary has to be filled. And your summary, again, is very important where you have to put your keywords, and where you want people, when they go to your profile, what do, what do you want them to know about you? Again, it's your best foot, foot forward. You have to use the keywords for SEO. Uh, LinkedIn has what's called a status update. And a status update, like when you go on Facebook and you post something, I suggest highly that you use this status update at least two to three times a week. Because what it does is when you add a status update, an actual message is sent to all of your connections without you sending your contacts a message. <clears throat> that status update, doesn't it, every time you, if you put a new picture in or you do anything to your profile, it's sent to all the contacts? That's notification. That's different. Status update, like for example, I have put today, uh, I am going to the uh, second part of the social media webinar for small businesses. That's a status update. You know, it's like what you're doing, or you are attending, I'm attending a seminar for small business, or this is my new blog. You know, or my ebook is coming out, or I got a new promotion. You know, it's all about you a status update. And what is the, because the people on LinkedIn are very, very sensitive to spamming. Anything that closely looks like a spam, they will report it. And LinkedIn does not tolerate spamming at all. So you cannot just, and that's why they have, when we're going to go through that into the invites, let's just finish this. So the connect is very important. Then they have one of the things that they have is applications. Yeah, I don't know if you know that LinkedIn just bought SlideShare. SlideShare is where you can go and put your PowerPoint presentation. So if you are in business and you have your own PowerPoint presentations, you put them on SlideShare, you connect your SlideShare to your LinkedIn profile so people can actually see samples of your work. What the, LinkedIn is has personal profiles, work profiles, if you are a job seeker, it increases your presence, increases your branding, and you can use it as branding. LinkedIn is what you're going to make out of it. You can use it as a marketing tool, you can use it as a business development, uh, increasing your database, find prospects, uh, joint venture, partners, even funding. So LinkedIn is basically what you do with it. This is more or less how a profile works. This is my profile, for example. So this is for the old profile. So if you see here, for example, this is a tagline. And it has everything I do there. And you need to remember that your tagline has a maximum of 160 characters. So you have to be very creative in, in doing it. So this is more or less you know, how it shows. And if you see here, this is another page where you have the experts of LinkedIn. And this is old, older. So I am number six. And this was 28,000 answers that they had. Now I think they are like 38,000. So it just, the more, this is more. This is what I meant by more. This has a drop down menu that has all the applications that you look for. And this is your search for people. On LinkedIn, you can search for people using their name, first and last name. You cannot use emails looking for people on LinkedIn. It has to be personal. Uh, group associations, like we said, you can have 50 groups and 30 subgroups. And what you can do is you can actually go and search for group. Put your industry, and when you want to add, for example, your location on the search box, what you can do is to add a plus sign. So, for example, you put uh, uh, chiropractor plus Los Angeles. So it will give you only the chiropractors in Los Angeles, not in the whole wide world. So you actually can specify and, and narrow down. So if you're looking for a group of chiropractors in Los Angeles, you can go and it will give you all lists of groups. You can read the experts, the little uh, summaries of the groups and see if this helps you or not. And you can see how many members is there. And the higher number of members, the better for you because you can connect to more people that are in there. But if you wanna go and, and join groups, it's nice to join people that are in your same industry, but also 
think about joining groups about who are your customers. Not only you, in the beginning, people, a lot of people do that mistake. They go and they join only groups that are within their industry. And they don't think that who I might want to. Small businesses, so I, there are plenty of groups of small businesses. You know, go for people that you think can be your marketing people after, or your, uh, your customers after that. <coughs> this is company profiles, and the company profiles I'm going to show you now, they, they came a long way. You can put a full summary about uh, products, services, people can write recommendations for your products now on your company profile. You can add pictures. There used to be a Twitter feed and a blog, but both have been taken away from LinkedIn. LinkedIn is not adding Twitter feed or blogs on the company pages anymore. But you can add a lot of products and services on there. Recommendations is another important tool. And I would say average, if you get between 20 to 30 recommendations, is more than enough. And whoever can give you recommendations, why are you laughing? You can't even get one. Why? People don't know what to write down. So write it for them. Yeah. Write it for them. That's what they, some people will tell me, you know what, I don't know what to write in your recommendation. So I would ask them, do you mind if I write you, I, I write it for you? You write it for them, all <laughs> they can do is like just copy and paste. You know, just do it, you know? Because recommendation, people look at recommendation because it's basically your seal of confirmation that you know what you're doing. And whoever can give you a recommendation on LinkedIn, only your first degree connection can give you a recommendation. Meaning if someone is not on LinkedIn or is not your first degree of contact, they will not be able to give you a recommendation on your LinkedIn. LinkedIn best practices, use your best foot forward, which is USP or value proposition in your tagline. Email or websites are not permitted to put on your tagline or your name because it's considered spam based on LinkedIn. Per whenever you send an invite, make sure to personalize it. Though there are some, some kinds of invitations on LinkedIn that cannot be personalized. Like for example, if you click the add connection, you're not going to be able to personalize it. But if someone shares a group with you, uh, you can send that personalized invitation. So tell me, like, for example, today I received an invitation that said, we met last week at the conference, so I knew who it was, you know, because they remind people who they are. And it's, it's important to personalize. People think that, okay, they spent the time to getting to know me. And we're going to talk about invites in a second. And then be careful of who you invite, because, LinkedIn allows you lifelong 3,000 invites to send to people. Only 3,000 invites. You can send out only 3,000 invites. When you deplete them, you can go later on to customer service and ask them for more, and they will send you batches of 50s. But the question comes to people go crazy on invites and they send just generic invites right and left. And the minute they get five, they, you can accept or ignore an invite. And ignoring, you can click on it and it takes you to another screen where you can actually mark someone as IDK. IDK I means know. I don't know. If you get five of those, your account will become restricted. Not suspended, restricted where you cannot invite, and even if you're inviting your brother or your sister, you cannot invite them without having their email address. And it becomes very hindering in doing that. If you get that, you need to send an email to customer service telling them that you didn't know that this was the case and that you promise you're gonna follow the guidelines of LinkedIn, and they usually unrestrict your account. So be careful with whoever you invite. Another thing, People go on LinkedIn, and then LinkedIn is a little bit tricky in there, where they ask you to import your email address books. So you upload your contacts from Gmail or Yahoo or AOL, and then you don't know who is in there. First of all, every invite that you send on this address, address box, it takes from the quota of 3,000. And then you might have emailed someone once and they don't even remember who you are. So they will IDK you. 
And the only way to take those out, those invites out, is not by deleting them. If you delete them, it's like you've never done anything. You have to actually manually withdraw them one by one. So if your email address book is big, good luck. Because by default, LinkedIn sends invites, when you import your address book, LinkedIn um, invites everybody on that address book and then sends them to reminders and people get annoyed. Mm -hmm. So be careful when you do that, okay? Don't mm -hmm. import your address books on LinkedIn, yes. LinkedIn is a great tool for marketing, for research. Like, we, like I said the last time I went and I, I was going to speak to a conference and I put a question. If you were in the audience and I'm talking about this, what would you expect? And then sometimes if I don't know someone, I wanted to change, I think, um, an audio format to a video format. Some, I can't remember, it has been like a couple of years ago. So I asked a question on LinkedIn, and you'd be surprised how many answers, great answers I received. And I was actually, was able to do whatever I wanted to do without even going and paying someone to do it for me. So always on LinkedIn, pay it forward. Always help people. It will come back to you. So this is my profile, okay, this is my picture, and this is the picture that I use everywhere. Your connections after 500, the maximum connections you can have on LinkedIn is 30,000. So from 501 to 30,000, it will show as 500 plus. So um, if you see on the right side, this is the activities. This is the, the, the home page, right? And if we see recommend, if we saw that uh, recommendation, these are skills, and then these are all recommendations. And like I said, I have like 22. Uh, this is the profile and how it looks. I'm sorry, the internet is a bit slow here. So. Okay. Uh, you see, like last yesterday, I appeared in 60 second searches, meaning 66 people that were looking for whatever services I offer, I appeared in 60, 66 times only yesterday. Because I optimized whatever I uh, have to. Like, for example, if we uh, go to the search for people here, and I put uh, diversity speaker, for example. It will take me to the search page. There are 15,000 results, and I appear number one. And I have a free account. And how do you raise up in? Keywords. Keywords. Uh, whoever wants to have that on their profile, I'll be happy to help them. It's instant. We do it. You see it in front of your eyes in a couple of minutes. You appear on the first page right away.